guys, welcome back to Political Pins that you may have. Um, today we're actually going to do a pin. We just did the license plate topper, but we're going to do a pin. And this person, this is for a person named Brian McMahon. And, uh, of course it's spelled like McMahon, but it's McMahon. And even, you know, political, not experts, but, you know, people who are interested in political, you know, political science, stuff like that, they probably don't even know who Brian McMahon is. Now, I, as a Connecticut citizen, do know who Brian McMahon is. He was a senator from Connecticut. He was a former senator. If I lived some, not in Connecticut, I might, you know, I might not know. But, um, I might not know who Brian McMahon is. But Brian McMahon, it sounds like a baseball player's name, but, it's, but he was actually a politician. Um, it says, for president, McMahon, or you could read, the man is McMahon. Now, that was his main campaign slogan. The man is McMahon. And so I actually saw this at a local flea market, and um, and immediately I had to get it. It was four four dollar these pins, but and the other pins, you know, were all you know for movies stuff like that, not political. But I got it anyway, just because I I know this pin is it's pretty rare, but it's not it's not super valuable. It's not you know a high sought after thing pin. But this pin it's really cool to me because this was made between. Almost certainly, this was made between January of 1952 and March of 1952. That's three months, cause, and I'm going to explain this in a second. But, um, yeah, like I said, he was a, he was a Connecticut senator. And, yeah, this is a 7 8 7 inch pin. This, you know, you know, you got your average 7 And, uh, like I said, this from 1952. And it was made from March, er, from January to March of 1952. Brian McMahon was Democratic. He was running for the Democratic nomination for president of the United States. Or was he? No, he was walking for president, just like Henry Cabot Lodge was in 1964. This man, he wasn't running. He was walking, as some people call it. But, um, but uh, yeah, so he, he was the favorite son of Connecticut. The people of Connecticut nominated him. They made these pins. They also made pins that said... The man who can is McMahon. Or, I'm sorry, it was actually Brian McMahon is the man who can. And, um, and I forget the other. But, um, but he was only popular for his stance on atomic and nuclear weapons and hydrogen bombs. But, um, because he, his campaign was based around scaring other nations with, U.S. bombs to create world peace. In the end, he wanted to create world peace, but not in a very, in my opinion, a good way. He wanted to scare other nations. That was that was his what his campaign was based around, and he was extremely popular um, among interventionists. Of course, this is, you know, this is right after the interventionists, isolationist movement, or not movements, but um, you know, when there were deep. Uh, divisions in the party from is uh, isolationists and interventionists. But, um, you know, it's still a hot topic of the day, a hot, hot button issue of the day. <laughs> like I said, he was an interventionist. But, um, yeah, the people of Connecticut really enjoyed Brian McMahon, and they wanted him for president. He was their senator, but they wanted to take it a step further and, you know, make him the next president of the United States. He never officially announced his candidacy, but he was deemed as a candidate easily. For he did have Connecticut and possibly other delegations on the East. Now, in March, this is why, you know, he was dubbed as a candidate in January of 1952, but in March, everything ended. Brian McMahon was hit by lung cancer. Now, lung cancer at the time wasn't, you know, wasn't like, oh, you know, you can't do anything. You have lung cancer. You know, you just, you know, you can just do your normal lives. So he didn't know how bad it was. And he stayed in the hospital for a week. He stayed at what is today Walter Reed. So, you know, when you go to Walter Reed, it's bad. It wasn't called that at the time, though. But, um, but yeah, he got out. And then he spent, you know, the rest of the campaign in bed at his house. He couldn't campaign. But he sent a message to the Connecticut Democratic Committee that said, that said, if elected president, not nominated, if elected president, he would order the Atomic Energy Commission to create or to, uh, to produce 
I think it was, I think it was 10,000 hydrogen bombs. Now, that was a statement at the time. I mean, you know, who says that? But, um, and the Democratic National Convention will have mounted. By this time, Adlai Stevenson is a candidate. He's a favorite son, but he grows and grows and grows, and he's a major candidate. There's a deadlock between him and Estes Kefauver, um, senator from Tennessee. Truman um, convinces W. Avril Harriman of New York to, to drop out and throw his support to Stevenson. Harriman's 70 delegates go to Stevenson and the nomination. But um, on the first ballot, I think it took four ballots to nominate Stevenson, but on the first ballot, Connecticut, just as a gesture, as a, you know, a gesture of loyalty to their senators, to their Congress, you know, to the people who represented them in the U.S. government, they pledged their 16, I think, delegates to McMahon. It was unanimous. Sorry, I said that wrong. I can't say that. But, um, you, unanimous. But um yeah the the Connecticut delegation said to they all voted to for Brian McMahon. But two days after the convention ended, Brian McMahon died, and he is buried. He's buried somewhere in Connecticut, I think. But uh yeah, and that is the story of a forgotten man named Brian McMahon. So thanks for watching, and in the comments let me know if you think Brian McMahon really was the man. And he was the man who can't, because he's a very forgotten man. But, you know, he could have done good, I think. But maybe not. Maybe his stands out in hydrogen bombs and nuclear atomic weapons, which I don't support, I'll tell you. I don't like that. Maybe that could have, you know, turned his presidency into a failure. So thanks for watching. And, uh, you know, leave a comment, leave a like, leave a subscription. And I'll see you next time.